Hi, good morning everyone. So today we are going to learn about retraction, scapular retraction, right? Many people, many students coming to me for upgradation of their courses from PT to level 3. They are questioning whether they should do retraction during exercises. So I will suggest them if your institute have taught you that, please continue or else try to get some tips from my end, right? To understand retraction, let's understand shoulder joint, right? For any exercises or any exercise if you are performing, if you want optimal functioning of the shoulder joint, if you need an optimal functioning of shoulder girdle then you need your stabilizers and your mobilizers to function or coordinate together right means you need to understand what are the stabilizers? And mobilizers, right? What I want to explain you for an optimal functioning of shoulder joint, the stabilizers and mobilizers need to act together right they need to interact together if they are not interacting together then there will be problem you won't be getting optimal functioning of the shoulder joint right so stabilizers origin from cranium spine or ribs and they insert on scapulae or clavicle right and the mobilizer origins from scapulae or clavicle and they insert on humerus or forearm right let's understand some stabilizers Prior that we have to make shoulder joint here, right? So let's make first sternum. So here is your manubrium, and this is your sternum here. I am partially drawing it. I am not drawing it completely. So this is manubrium. Right, and here is your clavicular notch. So, clavicular middle head will sit here. Right, this is your clavicular here, and this is your clavicular notch. And this is here your first rib. This clavicular middle end has leverage of first rib. So first rib is coming here from right. This is your first rib. Having costal cartilage here. Right. So we know now we have clavicle here, manubrium and sternum. Then let's draw scapulae.
here is your coracoid process so we are seeing or we are viewing this view from anterior right and then we have posteriorly coming your acromion process anteriorly so this is your acromion process so acromio clavicular joint here right and then we need humeral head and this is humerus right now let's understand stabilizers as i mentioned stabilizers will origin from cranium spine and ribs right so let's take the major retractor trapezius muscle right so trapezius origins from occipital bone right we can say base of the skull right this is your upper fiber of the trapezius they insert onto the clavicle so your stabilizer should origin from your cranium insert onto the clavicle or scapula right so it's inserting onto the clavicle lateral end of the clavicle right then we have one more stabilizer coming from c1 c2 c3 c4 transverse processes and inserts onto the superior angle of the scapula so this is your levator scapulae right it elevates along with the trapezius upper fiber and rotates the neck right so these are elevators then we have retractors and depressors so middle fibers and lower fibers like we, if we have to understand trapezius origins from the base of the skull and runs down all the nasal ligaments all the nasal ligament in the cervical and the spinous process of the thoracic vertebrae and they insert on to the acromion and the spine of this scapula so they are actually posteriorly but to give you visual picture i am drawing it anteriorly so you can understand them right so these fibers middle fibers helps us to retract the middle fibers helps us to retract they go on to the acromion posteriorly and on the spine of the scapulae right so they help us to retract right then let's understand one more stabilizer rhomboidus minor and rhomboidus major so minor origins from c7 to e1 from one vertebrae and inserts on to the base of the spinous process base of the spinous process and rhomboidus major origins from t1 t2 t3 t4 and t5 and inserts on to the medial border of the scapula or we can say like uh, vertebral border of the scapula right so these are rhomboidus major and rhomboidus minor they are responsible to elevate slightly as they are diagonal fibers they are diagonal fibers they will slightly elevate the scapula and retract 
and it will bring it to its resting position. Resting position. So what these stabilizers are doing, which are origin from the spine and inserting on the scapula, they are bringing scapula on to the resting position, right? So if we are retracting, the scapula will go inside or medially from its resting position, right? Now, mobilizers. So we have understood stabilizers. Stabilizers origins from cranium, spine and ribs. Ribs, we are getting serratus anterior, right? And they are inserting onto the serratus anterior uh, origins from first nine ribs and insert onto the medial border of the scapulae, right? And uh, we have understood as a stabilizer, trapezius, upper fibers, middle fibers and lower fibers. So upper fibers are helping to elevate, middle fibers are helping to retract and lower fibers are helping to depress, right? And these uh, rhomboid major and minor are bringing scapula to its resting position. The scapula is actually placed posterior laterally, not medially. It's placed posterior laterally onto the rib cage. So it is placed posterior laterally onto the rib cage, not medially. So you don't have to worry about retraction to bring it medially. These rhomboid major and rhomboid minor will bring them to its resting position. Alright? Now, mobilizers are originating from scapulae or clavicle and insert onto the humerus or forearm. Right? So let's take mobilizers, shoulder mobilizers, uh, deltoid anterior fibers, they origin from lateral end of the clavicle then middle fibers from the acromion process and the posterior fibers are coming from the spine of the scapula so let's understand them one by one so mobilizers origin from lateral end of the clavicle right so these are anterior fibers right then there are middle fibers coming from acromion. This part here is acromioclavicular joint. So this is acromion. Right? So middle head or middle fibers are coming from acromion and they are inserting onto the deltoid tuberosity. And posterior fi uh, fibers, we can't see from here, but I can try showing you somewhere here inside, right? So they are coming from the spine of the scapulae and insert onto the humerus. So I explained you, and uh, stabilizers are coming from cranium, spine and ribs, right? And mobilizers are coming from scapulae or shoulder. They both need to interact together for an optimal functioning of shoulder girdle right you might be understanding what i want to say a optimal means a complete response of the shoulder joint right if you want optimal functioning of the shoulder joint you need to use your stabilizers as well as use your mobilizers together you can't block one stabilizer or you can't afford having one blocked stabilizer. If you are stabilizers, let's take one example only. I'm not talking about retractors now. Let's take one example which is very visual, which can be seen easily, right? Let's take elevators. If these elevators are paralyzed or non-functional or disabled, what will happen? I will make this diagram here again to explain it better. So here is our manubrium. This is clavicular notch. This is first rib here. 
then this may implement this is terminal right i am just doing it partially so we can understand it better right and here is our thoracic p1 vertebra then we have clavicle here right and as leverage to this clavicle we have first rib coming from t1 right so this is your first rib which provides leverage to this clavicle right and it has some costal cartilage here right and this clavicle is held by trapezius upper fibers right if your stabilizer is blocked or become tight or we can say it is injured or non functional what will happen if this stabilizer is broken let's say it is broken or injured what will happen if can you get optimal functioning of the shoulder if this is weakened or if it is broken what will happen here due to gravity favors your clavicle lateral end will drop and sternal end will go dislocate from its sternoclavicular joint right this will drop somewhere here and this will go up this torque right did you understand the importance of this stabilizer stabilizers are very important not only this elevators even these retractors or depressors they should work together for an optimal functioning of the shoulder joint however if you want to understand one uh example in anatomical position we are already retracted right in anatomical position we are already retracted we are not protracted so scapula is slightly elevated upward rotated and retracted that's the reason we are anatomically seeing us upright otherwise we would be have, we would be in a position of protraction we have we are already retracted so why you want to retract yourself again or why you want to retract this you know uh, rhomboidus major or rhomboidus minor or why you want to retract this uh, middle fibers of the trapezius i hope you have understood this thank you very much